Welcome to your lesson on experimental versus theoretical probability. Let's begin with subjective probability. These are probabilities that are based on past experiences and opinions rather than formal calculations. For example, you wake up in the morning and you say, I think there's a 30% chance it will rain. This is subjective. You are just stating an opinion. Maybe you looked at the clouds, but it's still just an opinion. No data has been used. To better express probability, it is a good idea to run an experiment because it gives us data by which uh, we can make a better determination of probability. When we run an experiment, uh, first of all, an experiment is the process by which you obtain observations or data. Trials is the re repetition of experiments a certain number of times. So the number of trials is the number of times you run the experiment. An outcome is a possible result of an experiment. An event is an outcome or set of outcomes. And sample space is the set of all possible outcomes of an experiment. We always use the letter U to represent that, which means the universal set or all the possible outcomes. Considering these words for an experiment, please take a moment to read this paragraph or these few paragraphs and fill in with these bold words here these blue spaces. So what words best go in these spaces? Try it now. Okay, so check what you put. First one should be experiment, trials, outcome, and event. Take another read through that if you got any of those incorrect. Okay, looking at experimental versus theoretical probability. For example, we run a small experiment. We flip a coin 10 times, so we have 10 trials. Heads comes up three times, tails comes up seven times. In theory, we know that the probability of getting a head is 0.5 and the probability of getting a tail is 0.5. There's a 50-50 chance of getting one or the other. However, in our small experiment, since we have three heads out of 10, we have a probability of a head as being 0.3 and we have seven out of 10 tails which means the probability of getting a tail is 0.7. Notice our experimental probability does not match our theoretical. That is often the case, particularly if we run a small experiment like this, small number of trials, then our probabilities will not match what happens in theory. To get our th experimental to get closer to theoretical, we should run more trials, and we'll do that in a moment. Let's look at another example. We roll a die six times. Again, very small experiment. Our results are one is rolled twice, three is rolled three times, five is rolled once. Again, in theory, the probability of rolling a one is one out of six. Probability of rolling a two, also one out of six. All of these rolls have a one in six chance. They're all equally likely. However, in this small experiment, probability of rolling a one was two out of six because we had two two ones were rolled, and then three was three out of six, and a five was one out of six. And then we did not roll any twos, fours, and sixes, so we can say those probabilities are equal to zero. Notice our experimental probability is very different than what we, what we expect in theory. Again, we had a very small experiment. Third example, you pick 10 cards from a standard deck of 52 playing cards, and we get two hearts, three spades, one diamond, four clubs. In theory, uh, there are an ev equal number of hearts, spades, diamonds, and clubs in a deck of cards. There are 13 of each, making a total of 52 cards. So there is an equal chance of getting each of those 13 out of 52 hearts, which is a 1 in 4 chance, and the same for all of those. That's the theory. However, in our small experiment, uh, there are two hearts, so we can say 2 out of 10 were hearts, and 3 out of 10 were spades and so on and so on. So our experiment here, the results do not match the theory. Again, if we ran a much larger number of trials, then we would see our experimental probability get closer to that. Let's check that now. So we're going to do that with uh, the coin toss and the die roll. Again, in theory, our theoretical probability when you toss a coin is 50% heads, 50% tails. Let's look at this uh, by running a virtual experiment. So here is a virtual coin tosser. I'm going to toss the coin 10 times and see what results I get. All right, when I tossed it 10 times, I got six heads, four tails. 
notice we have a probability of 0.6 and 0.4. Again, in theory, this should be 0.5 and 0.5. So we're close, but not quite. We ran a small experiment. Let's do a bigger experiment, 50 tosses. When we toss 50 times, uh, notice we get closer to our uh, theoretical probability. Let's do even more. Let's do 100 and see if we get even closer. I'm running a bigger experiment, more trials, and the result is closer to the theoretical probability. We're getting closer and closer. Let's do 1,000. 1,000 should give us even better results, better in terms of getting us closer to the theory. There you go, we're very, very close now to the theoretical probabilities of 0.5 and 0.5. Very, very close. I'm going to now not clear the results and keep adding a thousand more to that, getting even closer to theoretical one more time. We're very, very close now to the theoretical probability. So again, as you run more trials in an experiment, you get closer to your theoretical probability. Let's try that with rolling a die as well. I'm going to roll a die here. 24 times. Let's check the results. When I roll the die 24 times, you can see one came up five times, two came up only twice, and these ones came up even. So different probabilities for each roll. One to six did not have the same chance of occurring in this small experiment. So let's make the experiment bigger. Let's do this 100. So 100 rolls. Let's see if we get closer to even bars in that histogram. Yeah, it's getting a little bit better. We can see we ran more trials, more rolls, and now each roll came up more evenly. Let's try a bigger number, like a thousand. When we roll the die a thousand times, getting closer, the bars are getting much more even. Let's try ten thousand and see what happens. All right, at ten thousand, we really start to see the results of running more trials. The bars are much more even now, so the probability of rolling each number is getting closer to being equally likely. So our experiment is bringing us closer to the theory, which means all of them are equally likely to happen. All right, let's uh, move on from there. So that's a big idea. Um, Theoretical probability can be obtained by running a large experiment. Please take a moment to read this now, concentrating on what this formula is all about. We've been using this formula already without knowing it, but this is the formula for calculating probability. Okay, I hope you took a moment to read that. Uh, pause the video. Now let's look at an example. You roll a die. You find the probability of rolling two sorry, it says find the probability of rolling two or less. So we're going to call that event A. Event A is rolling two or less. So event A contains this uh, set of possible outcomes. Rolling two or less means rolling a one or a two. So now to calculate our probability, we're going to use the formula we saw here. The probability of getting event A to occur, which is this event of rolling two or less, is the number of ways we can have the event occur divided by the number of ways or all the possible outcomes in the universal set. So the number of ways for A to occur is two ways. So we have two over all the possible ways or all the possible things that can occur is six different rules. So two out of six. So we've been using that intuitively already, but now we can see how the formula produces that probability. Two out of a possible six rules gives us this probability of rolling two or less which can be reduced to one-third. So again, pause this if you need to take a moment to read all this in, in detail. We didn't go over every line here. Okay, now we're going to look at another experiment just to show one more time how running a large experiment gets us close to the theory. Now we're going to roll a 12-sided die. So there are 12 possible outcomes. Let a be the event that a prime number is rolled. So just a reminder, a prime number is a number that can only be divided by one or itself. So in the numbers 1 to 12 that can be rolled here, the prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, 7, and 11. All the other numbers can be divided by something other than one in themselves. So these are the prime numbers. Of the 12 rolls, five of them we can see are prime numbers. Therefore, the theoretical probability here is if you roll one of these dice, a 12-sided die, the probability of getting a prime number is 5 out of 12. Five possibilities 
out of all the possibilities, which is 12. So that's our theory. Let's see how close we can get to the theory by running an experiment. So I have a Excel sheet prepared for this. This is something you might want to use when you do your IA if you need to gather data. This is a great way to generate data. So what I have here is roll number one, two, three. I'm going to roll the die many times and I want this to produce a random number. Notice the formula I have here is RAND to between 1 and 12. That means here it's going to give me a random number between 1 and 12. So now I'm going to drag from this corner, drag it down, and I'm going to run this experiment for many, many trials. Look at this. I've set this up to have, I think, 1,200 trials. So let me keep going. Look at all those trials. So I ran that random number 1,200 times, many, many trials, rolling 1 to 12. And in this column, I have a formula inputted there, which tells me no if it's not a prime and yes if it is a prime. So 9 is not a prime, 1 is not a prime, 6 is not, 7 is a prime, so yes, and so on and so on. So it's basically going to count the number of primes. So in this table here, I have, looking at the first 12 trials, so if I go down the list a little bit, here's the first 12 trials right here. And you can see in those 12 random rolls, a prime only came up once. So here in the first 12 trials, it counted a prime only once. And then here in the first 24 trials, so it looked at the first 24, eight primes came up. So obviously in the next, 20, next 12 here, there was much more primes. You can see more yeses here. And then so on and so on. It has, um, it's going to count it for me. And now I want to get the experimental probability. So in the first 12 trials, prime only came up once. So that this, I'm going to put equals this divided by this, and it's going to give me, and notice the numbers change here, and that's kind of strange because this is a one a moment ago, but these change because basically every time I input something here, this spreadsheet is set up to regenerate all these random numbers, so it regenerates. I'm going to drag this down, and I'm just going to look at the final result. Okay, so again, uh, it regenerated these, and now you can see there's more primes, but uh, anyway, in the first 12 trials, there was nine primes, so our experimental probability is 9 out of 12, and that gives us 0.75. And then in the first 24 trials, there were 14 primes. So our experimental probability is 14 primes out of 24 rolls. That gives us this probability here. And notice as we go further and further into this experiment, um, more trials, as we go all the way to the 1,200 trials, you can see what's happening with this number. As we run more trials, we get closer to, the again, the, uh, the theoretical probability. And the theoretical probability, again, was that we have 5 primes out of 12 on the die, and that works out to this decimal value. Notice how these are getting closer and closer to that decimal value. They haven't reached it yet, but as we run more trials, we get closer to that expected theoretical probability. All right, let's go back. So there's going to be a couple problems you're going to work on now that we've looked at that. Here is that, by the way, shown graphically. We show when there's a small number of trials, the theoretic, sorry, the experimental probability can produce any kind of number. But then as you run more trials, that experimental probability jumps around, jumps around, and eventually over many, many trials, the experimental probability settles in at one value. And that one value is the 0.41, which is the theoretical, the 5 out of 12, that it is expected over the long term. Okay, here's some problems you're going to try. Here's problem one. Please try this first one here. Here's the answer. Check your work. Now try the next one, O. Here's the answer for that. Try the next one, D. There's that. Try the next one, C. There's the answer. Try I. And here's the answer for that. Okay, so I hope uh, that made sense. This is basic probability. We're using sample spaces and the probability formula. Here's a few more problems to try. Try 2A. Check your work. Try 2B. Check your work there. Try 2C and check your work. One last problem. Here's problem three, try A. Here's the answer. Try B. 
answer and try C answer okay